Good morning, I'm Ken Lees, I'm from um, I'm past president of ESO and I'm also a stroke physician. I'm here at the European Stroke Organization Conference in Prague and I'm here with Dr. Bertrand Lepergue from Paris, who's the PI of the ASTER trial. Good morning. Hi, good morning. So the ASTER trial, this is testing uh, another endovascular treatment. Now I understand that stent retrievers are, are um, they're, they're reckoned to be extremely effective in treatment of stroke. What's the difference between what you're testing and the stent retrievers, please? Has the trial focus on a new strategy, a new device? I mean, you, you, you write the standard treatment is a stent. So for the moment, all of the randomized control trials focus and use stent retriever to remove the clot. In ASTA trial, we assess uh, the impact of distal aspiration. It's another strategy because you don't use a stent, you use an aspiration catheter to remove the clot. So for the first time, we're going to present new data about the aspiration strategy to remove the clot versus stent retriever. Okay, so what do you see as the potential advantages and the potential disadvantages of the aspiration approach versus, versus a, a stent retriever, which to my mind is, is grabbing hold of the whole clot and removing it intact, we hope. Don't forget that with stent, we got amazing results because we, and from Hermes uh, meta-analysis, we know that the result of successful reperfusion uh, was around 71% of successful reperfusion with stent. It's not enough. We have to do more and better. It's why we want to test is with a new strategy, Aspiration 1, um, we got more uh, efficient results. Given our previous data, we published retrospective data about aspiration and we got very surprising results with higher successful reperfusion rate versus stent. It's why we want to perform a randomized controlled trials to compare aspiration and stent and to demonstrate or not if it's superior or not. Okay, so you, you've set up a, a randomized trial then. So tell me a little bit about your trial. How, how big was it and, and in whom was it done? After trial was a randomized controlled trial. We've seen a center in France. We randomized uh, 381 patients um, between stent and aspiration frontline. The question is, should the operator use aspiration or stent in front of the M1 occlusion, for example? So it's our criteria in ASTA trial were, were very broad and it's a real life uh, trials. Means um, all of the anterior circulation occlusion uh, stroke patient could be included in ASTA trial. Uh, it's why we uh, uh, and whole patient very um, fast, faster than we expected, because we've seen only one year, we enrolled 381 patients. And um, then we compare uh, the rate of successful reperfusion at the end of the procedure. Okay, so you're looking at the rate of successful reperfusion. Um, that's not necessarily the same as, as functional outcome, which we will come to later, but what did you find in, in terms of the, the reperfusion? The, the primary outcome was a technical outcome. Yes. So it was a successful reperfusion. And what we see, it's very similar, not okay. a significant difference between the two harms. Okay. Means 85% versus 83 in the stent harm. Uh, so it's not significant, it's similar. I don't see, I, I don't uh, want to say equivalent, but again, after trial was in superiority design. So we got very similar result, but I cannot say, okay, it's equivalent just very similar in terms of efficacy and in terms of safety. Okay. What then about the other results? Because you have new results that are here, which are, are the, the longer-term functional outcomes. What did you find there? Of course, it's our goal. It's a passion. And we expected no difference, and we saw no difference. In terms of ranking, we got 45 to 50% um, in both harms. So there is no significant difference in terms of disability at three months. And again, we look at subgroup uh, analysis because uh, we saw that maybe in terms of site of the occlusion, of the clot burden, maybe we can see some difference between these two strategies, but not. Uh, the results are very consistent across all of the, our uh, pre-specified subgroup analysis in terms of site uh, of the occlusion, M1, M2, termination of the SCA, of the, in terms of uh, clot burden score, or length of the, uh, of the clot. So our results for me are um, 
concern all of the situation. I mean, we did not detect any difference in terms of subgroup populations. Okay. okay, thank you. But but I, I had a look at the at the ranking outcomes that, that you, you have found. And I'm intrigued that although, as you say, this is a secondary outcome and it was not significantly different, it did look to me as if when you look at the distribution of outcomes, the odds ratio for for achieving a better outcome was lower. It was 0.76, I think, the point, the, the point estimate for it, 0.76 in the, the aspiration group, which would be consistent with roughly a 25% a reduction in good outcomes or in, 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 in the rate of that. And the, uh, and the confidence in, interval, of course, is very wide around that. It's anything from, from a twofold worsening in good outcomes to a 10% improvement in good outcomes, so wide range. But if we were to take that as being a true reflection of what really would happen if we did a very big trial, is, it, is there any biological reason why the aspiration approach could achieve the same degree of reperfusion acutely, but not translate into such good functional outcomes? Is, is, is there any explanation for that? Could there be anything to do with, with the methodology and, and what happens to the clot that would explain it, please? You're right. I mean, ASTER was um, a technical trial yeah. with a technical primary outcome. So if you look at the data, you, you can see that the stent retriever harm is a little bit younger and the rate of uh, previous uh, disability is a little bit higher in the aspiration group. So I have to be very cautious about the interpretation of the Rontin score. We did not balance and stratify between the randomization um, for the Rontin uh, assessment because, again, our primary outcome was the TIKI, the score of reperfusion. Yes. Okay, it's always very dangerous going into subgroups and secondary analyses and, and non-significant results. I accept that. Um, so, where do you go from here? For me, we reach a milestone. It's just the start of the story about the aspiration. The only thing we have now is robust and equivalent data about the aspiration. We did not demonstrate an equivalence. We need to, to, to wait for um, COMPASS trials and US uh, trials which are ongoing now. We, we're going to pull all the data. But with Aster, um, uh, we open the door of the aspiration. My, my, my thing is all of the situations are quite different. And for the operator in the future, in terms of um, uh, clot phenotype or site of um, uh, occlusion, maybe one strategy versus the other uh, could be better. Maybe the future would be to combine both aspiration and stand again. How result now are, are, are not the best, are not, I mean, we say, okay, stent retriever is a revolution, you're right, with 71% of successful reperfusion, but only 46% of uh, um, mild or moderate disability in terms of ranking. How do much and better? Maybe the future will be to combine and to get more uh, successful reperfusion and especially a special focus on perfect reperfusion. I think the next step now is to focus on TK3 remove all the clot and to get a perfect reperfusion. The rate of perfect reperfusion is around 45% in all of the study with stent. It's quite the same with um, uh, standalone uh, aspiration. The next step now is to increase that because we, our group and other group demonstrated that patient with TK3 versus TK2B is not the same in terms of disability at three months. There is 20 um, uh, uh, point difference uh, in the Rontin score, in the proportion of 0 to 2 Rontin score at three months between TK2B to and TK3. So now the target is TK3. Uh, maybe with combine, we're gonna start ASTER 2 trial combining aspiration and stent versus stent. So for me, this is the future. Okay, well, that, that, that sounds very good. I, I think you're absolutely right that we, we, we've achieved an enormous milestone with endovascular treatment and it, it will and has transformed stroke care. But it's the beginning rather than the end. It, it, there's a huge amount of work still to do. Uh, Dr. Leperg, thank you very much. I've appreciated very much talking to you. And uh, goodbye to everyone from Prague. Thanks a lot.